Hi everyone and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock and we're here on location at the Oliver Wyman Health Innovation Summit. And do I have a wonderful guest joining us right now, Alexandra Drain. Alex, welcome to the interview. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. We're thrilled that you are here. So Alex, you are the co-founder and board chairman of Eliza Corporation. Eliza, or excuse me, Alex, you presented today on how to make consumer engagement make business sense. What were your top points this morning? I think one of the things that we have forgotten in healthcare is if you want to sell more of something, you have to sell something people want to buy. Right? I think often, especially with technology, we are technology in search of a problem, as opposed to thinking about how do we solve the problems that real people want solved. And I think of things very simply in a Maslow's hierarchy kind of way, which is we're talking to people about being their best self and exercising and taking care of their diabetes. Meanwhile, for far too many individuals, they are their marriage is falling apart, their mother with Alzheimer's just moved in and they hate their boss so much they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And then increasingly what's getting attention, as you know, is we've got this whole population that actually doesn't have safety, doesn't have food, doesn't have clothing, right? doesn't have the, the basics. And one of the things we talked about today, which I think is a fascinating topic, is loneliness as an example of something that is really a problem in the healthcare space that we're not talking about. And I think we need to meet people where they are in the messy realities of their lives, think about the things that are stressing them out, waking them up at two in the morning, and those are our problems, right? These are the problems that we have to solve because they are not only keeping people from focused, focusing on making healthier choices, being healthier, they're actually robbing them of their health. These life challenges are shortening telomeres and ultimately killing people. Absolutely, and you know, I know that, that this would resonate with you. Um, you know, we had Tomato Tremuto on before, and he was saying that he just finished writing a book, and he was in a position, it was, it was just a few months ago, keynoting a, a, an industry event, and the, the venue convinced him to talk about the book, and he said, well, I wasn't really thinking that I was ready to do it, but he did, and it was about those bulldozer moments. Yeah. And so talking about those things that, um, you know, can kind of build you know, take you down in life. Not everyone necessarily always has the resources to build them back. So yeah. they'll build themselves back up like Donato did. So I think yeah. what you're trying to shine a light on is yeah. health is more than just that episodic. Did you get the flu shot? You yeah. know, are you are your your you know your your vitals where they should be? It's so much more. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I often say that in healthcare we have two personalities, right? We have the personality that we bring to work every day where we feel wonderful at lecturing people about all the things that they should do, and then we go home and we don't do any of them, right? We take terrible care of ourselves. We drink too much. We don't sleep. We cancel our, our appointments because we don't want to go to them. We don't go exercise. There's actually a point that came up today on the panel that I think is even more important than that, that we as healthcare professionals, you know, team members need to take into very serious consideration, which is, these life challenges are happening to us too. So it's not only that we ourselves are not taking good care of ourselves, we're also having life stress. So Kyra, who gave this incredible keynote, Fantastic. then yeah. comes out afterwards and sits on the couch and says, well, my dad is actually going through this terrible health thing, so I don't even feel like I'm really here. And Kent talks about the stress that he went through his, with his mother. And I think if we literally had taken the microphone and run around the room, while you see all these executives sitting here somewhat present, at least some percentage of a not insignificant percentage of their bra or their brains are off solving yeah. another problem that is in their home, it's related to something deeply personal, and it, again, is causing a health challenge for them. Well, you know, it's, I want to I want to bring it back to your background and your experience and what you've done in the health industry, um, Alex. It's so important. You know, Eliza Corporation conducted studies which really truly got to the bottom of what prevents most people from taking care of their own health. Can you tell us why empathy might solve for those concerns? Yeah. Well, you know, what happened to us was we, like everyone else in healthcare, were solving the problems that we think matter. So we get measured based on HEDIS, we get measured based on metrics that are around clinical factors. And the beautiful thing about Eliza is we sit on this communication platform that lets us interact with a huge number of people on a regular basis. And we don't, we don't believe in talking at folks, we believe in really having a conversation, and part of a conversation is asking questions and listening for responses. What we notice is we would say to somebody, are you gonna get a mammogram, will you take care of your diabetes? And some not insignificant percentage of people would come back and say, no, I'm not. And we would say, okay, why not? And we'd go through a list of the reasons that the literature said were true. Like, it's I'm afraid of finding out the results, it's scheduling, it's transportation, it's cost. But a huge percentage of people would say, no, 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 no. So we learned, thank you, Susanna Fox, to say, what's the open-ended question? Well, why aren't you? 
And you'd be amazed at the number of people who would say, oh, I would love to take better care of my diabetes. I know I need to get my mammogram. Absolutely, I'll go get my yearly physical. I just can't right now. My husband just lost his job. I'm caring for an aging parent. And I will tell you, when, you, when the data comes back to you in the form of real humans sharing real hardships that they're having, real stories, individual little snippets, snapshots into where their lives are breaking down, that creates empathy. And I don't think you can continue to lecture somebody about all the things they're not doing that the healthcare system thinks they should. Once you feel for a minute, oh my God, this person's deeply sad, deeply lonely, deeply stressed. And so I think when you put yourself in that position, then you can't help but begin to think on that, on the behalf of the consumer, the patient, the human, the soul that you're serving. What do they need from us? What they need from us is help with their financial stress, their relationship stress, their caregiver stress, right? And you can call it something as basic as stress management, which are tools and tricks that we can teach people at help. But I think that there are other things we can be doing, connecting caregivers to other caregivers, right? Just connecting people who have financial stress to online tools and services and networks that can help them. There are a lot of things that we can do. My last point on this is sometimes people will say back to me, you know, I get a lot of like, well, you're so cute. That's such a cute idea, but that's not healthcare's problem. Yes, it is healthcare's problem. And I would say it's actually healthcare's opportunity because these things are costing money, real money, and they are hurting people's health. All right, so you take me to my next question. Um, you know, actually, before we start the next question, I have to I have to share that uh, when you walked on stage this morning, you were you were preparing to moderate a panel, and you said, "I can't believe how how much I feel like I'm amongst my people." You know, when I hear words like compassion and kindness and empathy, and how unusual is it for you to be in a setting with leaders like this? I mean, Oliver Wyman brings uh, you know very very senior level executives here to hear that kind of vocabulary in, in, an, in an industry event. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I was What I was going to say, but I thought it would be dorky, it is dorky, <laughs> is that I really was sitting in the back behind the stage, like holding up my Bic lighter. This is how old I am. Like, like this. Like, oh my God, I can't believe we're talking about this. And it was an extraordinary thing because usually yeah. all you hear about is these, and let's be clear, helping someone take care of their diabetes, helping, of course that matters. That's not the point. It's just... We haven't earned the right to help them with their diabetes until we've helped them with the stuff that's stopping them from even going forward in life. And so to hear titans of industry legitimize on a stage in front of folks with big budgets and big populations, because that really matters, right. talking earnestly about the need for kindness, the need for compassion. Empathy is a true North design principle. Asking people, what are you doing to these ends? I, I was essentially speechless. I was like, oh my God, it was wonderful. Well, no better industry to really start adopting that kind of vocabulary and that mindset than healthcare. Yes. You know, where we're all consumers and well, we all benefit from that sort of high touch, you know, and care. Well, and I think what Sam said, what Terry said, what Kent said, what was repeated over and over again is, guys, that's why we got here in the first place. Yeah. This is what healthcare is, right? This is why we came into it. It gets beaten out of us over time for legitimate reasons that we have to address. But the core of why people come into this space is to help other people be happier, be less alone, be healthier, help less, have less fear. Right, right. Right? We just, it sort of gets beaten out of us a little bit over time. Well, all right, let's, until people like you shine the light back on it. So, all right, I have another question for you. Um, you have been, Alex, a successful serial entrepreneur for your entire career. Kudos to you. <laughs> That's what not true. It, well, <laughs> at, you've been a serial entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur with entrepreneur. some successes, great successes, yeah. successes along the way. What advice do you have for people looking to leave their imprint on history, which is something you yourself are looking to achieve? Yeah. Well, the first thing I would say is I think as entrepreneurs, and you and I have talked about this before, we owe it to each other to share our failures, to share our learnings, to share the things that aren't working. Partially because then you can help Esther Dyson, whom I love madly. She has a, the term, make new mistakes. And so if I share the, all the stupid things I screwed up in the last little bit of time, I help you avoid those. But I think even more importantly, changing the world is hard. And doing new things is hard. And when you're out there doing it, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to be an iterative process. And if all you're surrounded with is people telling stories about how their business is awesome and everything they're doing is awesome, when that happens to me, I feel badly about myself. And I start to think, I'm a loser. Like, what's wrong with me? I must be the only one who doesn't get it. When I'm around entrepreneurs, 
who were generous with sharing, of course their success, but just as much, let me tell you all the mistakes I've made, then I sort of get the like ugh, inner power to be like, okay, then I can go at it again, which I think is really, really important. I think what we need to figure out as humans is what is the thing that we feel most called, most called to do to change the world. And as I have been getting um, more and older and more introspective and more reflective of what, what I'm really tortured by, I want to help people feel less alone. I think all of us feel alone. And even the most successful person in the world, in the dark of the night, left to themselves, is stressed about something. They think they suck at something. They're worried about something. And I think if we could connect together, commune better as humans, and share more about our hardships, I might not be able to fix the thing that's wrong, but at least I can let you know you're not alone in the thing that's wrong. And I think that's key. So I think for each of us, it's just a process of paying a lot of attention to what what turns you on? Like, what, 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 when do you hurt when people are describing something? And pay attention to that because figuring out what you want to do to change not only will make you feel better, but I think it helps you focus so that you can go ahead and have that impact. You know, so you talked about uh, Maslow's, uh, you know, operating in Maslow's Law, and, uh, you know, I, I think the way that you describe it, you're enabling people to, to operate at their highest and best self when you're taking care of their whole self. So what a tremendous mission that you have, and we're so fortunate to have you here sharing your insights with us. Certainly hope we get to meet up with you again, Alex. Yes, yes, yes. It's been a delight. Yes, thank you. So, all right, well, we're here at the Guidel Insights Lounge. We're live streaming. We're going to have another interview with you in just a moment. Please keep watching. Thanks so much.